Ox saddled by debt, all for treatment they needed to save their life. One in five people in North Carolina have medical debt in collections. That's more than a million people. We've been on your side digging deeper into this problem for more than a year, telling stories of real people struggling to pay their hospital bills. This thing can run you financially. Like right now, if I didn't play this just right, I would be absolutely bankrupt. And I still may be. Now, lawmakers in Raleigh are listening and taking action, introducing legislation that would protect parents. Patients, I should say. But WBTV investigative reporter David Hodges has found the bill's progress is stalled with one powerful group standing in the way. Uh, we would go 25 years. So I had 25 wonderful years. Well, like I said, I, um, I try to think about the good, the good times. I don't want to just think about you know, cancer. Yeah. Terry Belk's wife, Sandra, was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2003. She beat it, but it came back. She was actually afraid to go back to the hospital because of the bills. I actually didn't tell her about it. I just say, listen, let's just go get better. Even after she died, they still uh, came at me uh, very egregiously for the bills. They had no compassion whatsoever. I first met Belk a year ago when he was fighting a lawsuit filed by Atrium Health to collect on medical debt more than a decade old. Those bills were his. He says because of his wife's outstanding debt, he signed over a deed of trust on his house to the not-for-profit hospital. He reached out to WBTV because he knew he wasn't alone. I wanted to speak up so other people would say, okay, if, if he can speak up, maybe I can speak up. People come forward. Don't be afraid to, to, to speak up about this. WBTV has told more than 20 stories highlighting the cost of medical debt. And in May, the North Carolina Senate unanimously passed the Medical Debt Deweaponization Act. The bill would shield family members from the medical debt of a loved one, protect people's access to itemized bills, require hospitals to screen patients for charity care, and limit how much hospitals charge for visiting facilities facilities. But for more than a month, the bill has sat in a House committee with no hearings and no movement. And people like me, we don't have a couple of years for this thing to get pushed back in committees and bounced back and, and people say they support it and then they really don't. Uh, we really need this to become um, law. We are one vote away in North Carolina to being number two in the country in terms of protecting the consumers of North Carolina regarding medical debt if this legislation were passed. North Carolina Treasurer Dale Falwell has been a top proponent of the bill. Is there anything or is there anyone standing in the way of this bill becoming a law? Well, the, you know, the hospital cartel, uh, you know, they don't come in the front door. So I would say that if there's anyone trying to stop this legislation, it would be them. The North Carolina Healthcare Association represents more than 100 hospitals. The group opposes the bill. A spokesperson for the Healthcare Association wouldn't answer questions on camera and sent a statement that didn't directly address the bill, saying in part, quote, hospitals want all patients to have a satisfying care experience, including with the financial process, and they strive to deliver on that every day. We went to work finding out what NCHA is doing to oppose the bill by following the money. Since 2022, when the bill was first introduced, NCHA has donated more than $260,000 to North Carolina lawmakers' campaigns. Records show they also racked up more than half a million dollars in lobbying costs in 2022, the third most of any organization in the state. That includes money spent on things like this legislative reception captured in this video posted by the NCHA on YouTube. Records show the group spent more than 20 grand on the event. Their website shows the results, highlighting the bills they've blocked and the bills they currently oppose, including the deweaponization bill. They've tried to stop all the legislation that we've put forward uh, to bring transparency to health care and health care billing. Belk's mountain of medical debt is growing. On top of everything he already owes, Belk says he recently had emergency surgery. Now I'm probably on the hook now for about 10 grand off of a... Uh, a new bill. Belk says passing the deweaponization bill should be the only option for North Carolina's elected leaders. I'm convicted for this. It has to pass. There's not a plan B. Or it's only plan A. Reporting in Charlotte, David Hodges, WBTV, on your side.
David, thank you. WBTV has received hundreds and hundreds of emails and phone calls about the burden of medical debt and questions about what to do to create change. So on our website, in this story, we have included...